Welcome again, everyone, to another class with me, Sean Helene. And today we're going to be opening the fronts of our thighs and our hip flexors using something that I like to call the lunge game. And I called it the lunge game because it's pretty intense work. I wanted to bring a little bit more of a fun tone to it, but it's really effective at getting some tighter parts of our thighs to open effectively. All you'll need for today is one block. Let's get started. So we're gonna begin on our backs with our blocks. So go ahead and just lie down, take your block, and I want you to slide the block at the lowest setting underneath your lower back, right where your sacrum and your tailbone are. If you don't know where your sacrum and your tailbone are, it's usually right around where your pant line is. Then hug your right leg into your chest and stretch your left leg on the floor. And as you stretch your left leg on the floor, squeeze your left leg and do your best to roll the inner left thigh down slightly. Really difficult to do in this position, but even a little bit goes a long way. And then switch sides, hug your left leg in, stretch your right leg down on the ground. Again, as you hug the left leg in, press your right leg towards the floor and roll the inner right thigh down. And then release. Now you can repeat that with the block at the same height, or I'm gonna take the block now up one setting to the middle setting, which intensifies it a bit, and then repeat. Hug your right leg in, stretch your left leg down on the ground. Again, squeeze your left thigh and roll the inner left thigh down. Now this time, stay here, but I want you to actually point your left toes and stretch your left arm up and overhead and maximize the length of your left body from your left big toe to your left middle finger. And then switch sides, hug your left leg in, stretch your right leg down, squeeze your right thigh and roll the inner right thigh down. And then point the toes. So when you point the foot, it extends the front of the leg a little bit more and contracts the back of the leg. Take your right arm up and overhead. So if you extend the front of the leg more, it really helps to get deeper into the front of the thigh. I even feel this in my belly and my side ribs a bit. It's delightful. And then go ahead and release. Now take the block out from underneath you, move it to the side. We'll come back to some block work in a little bit. And then just roll over onto your side. Come up onto all fours, hands and knees. Walk your hands forward a little bit, tuck your toes, and then reach back to downward facing dog. <clears throat> Separate your feet nice and wide for your first down dog. Bend your knees and then stretch your hips back as you press your hands down and forward. Then keep reaching your hips back and slowly begin to extend your legs a little bit straighter and longer. Then bring your feet back to about hips distance apart Shift forward to a high push-up position. Push into the floor with your hands. Lift your hips, thighs, and even ribs up a little bit. And then exhale, go back to downward facing dog. Again, inhale with the breath, forward to plank pose. Lift the whole front of your body up into the back of your body. And then exhale, go back, downward facing dog. And final time like that, inhale, come forward. Thighs up, belly, ribs, even chest up a little bit. And exhale back to downward facing dog pose. Walk your hands all the way to the back of your mat, standing forward fold. Place your hands on your hips and slowly come all the way up. Exhale, hands to your sides, mountain pose. You now reach your arms back up to the sky. Exhale, fold to the floor. Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, walk yourself forward into downward facing dog again. Now in your downward dog, this time bend just your right knee. Turn your left toes out about 30 degrees and try to put your left heel and foot flat on the ground for a calf hamstring outer hip stretch. So almost like you're trying to create warrior one in your left foot, the back leg, warrior one. Then switch sides, bend your left knee, 
Turn your right toes out 30 degrees and stretch the right heel towards the ground. Keep reaching your hips back. It's hard to do in this position, but really stretch the pelvis back, stretch the arms forward. And then one more time on each side, bend your right knee, turn your left toes out, calf love dog. And then come back to center, bend your left knee, turn your right toes out, and stretch the right heel. If it doesn't touch the ground, no biggie, but try to get it down to really get the whole back of the calf to extend. Then walk your hands all the way to the back of your mat again. Place your hands on your hips and slowly come on up. Exhale, hands to your sides, Tadasana. Inhale, reach your arms back up to the sky. Exhale, to the floor, standing forward fold. Walk your hands to the front of your mat, downward dog. Inhale, take your right leg into the sky this time. Exhale, bring your right leg forward to a lunge. Lower your left knee to the floor. Move your left hand to the left till it comes off of your mat onto the floor, and then twist your right arm up to the sky for a moment. Inhale, release your right hand down. Step back down, facing dog. Inhale, take your left leg up into the sky. Exhale, bring your left foot forward to a lunge. Right knee to the ground. You can move the right hand wider. And what that does, exhale, twist your left arm up. It helps you to get more into the upper back and to the side ribs when you twist in this pose. And then inhale, release your left hand down. Step to the front of your mat, standing forward, fold. Inhale, arms up to the sky, stretch. And exhale, hands to your sides, mountain pose. All right. A few sun salute variations. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Exhale, fold to the ground, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, step your right leg to the back of your mat. Lower your right knee to the floor. Inhale, stretch your arms up to the sky. Interlace every finger except your pointer and thumb. Kali mudra. And as you exhale, take a little side bend to your left, so your right side ribs really extend. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, hands down, step back down, downward facing dog. Inhale, to a plank pose. Shift forward, bend your elbows and lower down. Inhale, the cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale from down dog, stretch your right leg into the air. Exhale, step your right leg forward, left knee to the ground. Inhale, arms up. Take Kali Mudra again. And then as you exhale, side bend over to your right. The hips might shift a little bit over to the left when you do this. That's totally fine. Inhale, come back up to center. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step to the front of your mat, standing forward fold. Then inhale, bend your knees, rise up to chair, because why not? Everyone love hates chair. Then in your chair, turn your palms forward, bend your elbows up to the sides, and squeeze your shoulder blades into the back of your chest. Then inhale, stand up, hook your thumbs, now reach. Exhale, fold back to the ground, standing forward, fold. All right, this time, please step your left leg back, lower your left knee. This time, point your back foot, inhale, arms up, take Kali Mudra, exhale, press the top of the left foot down as you side bend it to your right. The more you can press your left foot, the better off you'll be. Inhale, come back up, exhale, hands down, step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, the plank pose. Always wait for the breath, exhale, lower down. Inhale, back bend, rise up. Exhale, oh, downward facing dog. Last time, inhale, take your left leg up, please. And then exhale, step your left foot forward to a lunge. Right knee to the ground, again, point your back toes. Inhale, arms up, take your mudra. Now press the top of the right foot down with fervor, and then side bend to your left as you press the foot down. Try to straighten your arms. Try to breathe. Inhale, come back up. Release your hands. Step forward. Forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. One more time. 
Turn your palms forward, bend your elbows, squeeze the outer shoulders, lats in. Then inhale, stand up, thumbs hooked, and stretch. Exhale, hands to your sides. Oh, I hope you're warmed up because I'm schwitzing, but I'm always schwitzing, so I don't know. That might not mean anything. Now, front of asana at the front of your mat. Inhale, stretch your arms up. Oh, my arms are cut off. Oh, well. Exhale, fall to the ground, forward fold. Now from here, I want you to step your right leg to the back of your mat. Place your hands up onto your front thigh. All right, so here we go. Lengthen your stance a little bit, so wiggle your foot back slightly. In most poses, it's easier to move the back foot than the front foot because there's often more weight in the front leg than the back leg. Then, I want you to walk your hands all the way up to the top of your left thigh, right where it meets the hip. Now, bend your back knee a little bit, and as you exhale, I want you to root and press your left thigh down until your left thigh is parallel to the floor, or close to it. Now, keep your left thigh rooting down. Don't let it lift up. But now squeeze your right thigh and lift your right thigh up towards the ceiling. You'll notice when you lift your right thigh up, the left thigh wants to lift too. And you're like, no, this is the game. Left thigh stays down, right thigh lifts, and then try to tack your left hip back a little bit. What a fun game. Then release your hands down and step or jump, switch sides, right leg forward and left leg back. Take your hands up to your front thigh. Again, take a slightly longer stance than you used to. So it feels like I'm asking you to do different things with your thighs, but actually I'm just asking you to move your thighs towards the hamstring side of your leg. That just happens to be downward on the front leg, upward on the back leg. So now, with your hands at the very top of your right thigh, bow forward, bend your back knee a little bit. Now, it's imperative that you don't push your right thigh forward towards your knee. It's not a shifting of the hips forward. It's a rooting straight down. Oh, you'll notice everything will kind of drop down when you do this. Now, keep the right thigh rooting down. Squeeze your left leg and try to pull your left thigh up. Now, are you pulling your thigh or just jamming your knee? Lift the thigh and the knee while you release the right thigh down. This is exhausting oh my god and then release your hands step back downward facing dog boy it's a long time since i played this game inhale come to a plank pose exhale lower down pose inhale cobra or upward facing dog and then exhale downward facing dog pose all right from downward dog walk your hands to the back of your mat Take your feet as wide as your mat, turn your toes out 45 degrees, squat for a moment. This is a counter pose to all the lunging we'll be doing. We'll be here just a second, and then back to downward facing dog pose. All right. From downward facing dog, take your right leg up into the sky. Exhale, step your right foot forward between your hands again. Take your hands up to your front thigh. Now, oftentimes, the first time we do something, it's just kind of figuring it out. So the second time we do it, we get to really enjoy it. Walk your hands up to the very top of your right thigh. Bend your back knee for a moment. Root your right thigh down. Okay. Keep your right thigh rooting, and then squeeze your left leg straight. Lift your left thigh up. Now, when you do this, you'll probably notice your heel stretches back quite a bit, unless you've got a really long stance. And if your stance is that long that your heel doesn't move back, you're probably falling over right now. All right, so squeeze, lift the back thigh, right thigh roots. Now, with your hands on your front thigh, just pull your belly and ribs back a little bit, and then release your hands down. Step out, three-legged dog, with your right leg up into the sky. Lift your left heel, stack your right hip on top of your left, and then bend your right knee. And then release your right leg down. Third, se second side, left leg up to the sky, and left foot forward, hands to your front thigh. 
All right, here we go. Walk the hands up to the front of the thigh, the top of the thigh. Bend your back knee again, root the thigh down. If you can't get the hip as low as the knee or the thigh parallel, that's fine. Just work in that direction because I want you to keep your thigh, the front thigh, low while you squeeze and pull your back thigh up to the sky. Stretch the heel back a bit. Then pull your belly and ribs back slightly. Right thigh pulls up, pull it up. Left thigh descends. My teacher used to come back behind me when we were doing this and try to sit on the back thigh to feel if we were really lifting up. I wouldn't recommend that, but you could imagine, oh, I'm trying to pull someone up with my back thigh. And then exhale, release your hands down. Step back, left leg into the air. Again, lift your right heel, stack your left hip on top of your right. Fire hydrant dog for a moment. Bend your left knee. And then back to downward dog. Walk your hands to the back of your mat. Come to a forward bend. Because good God, I need a rest for a second. Ugh. I mean, mmm. <laughs> All right, let's do more hard things. Come back to downward facing dog. So now we get to play the lunge game in a lot of different places. So from downward dog, this time, take your right leg up into the air. And then step your right foot outside your right hand. So it's going to be a wider stance. Turn your right toes out about 45 degrees. Now, walk your hands way forward. So this is called downward dog lunge. And the idea is you're creating lunge in your downward dog. I'm sorry, lunge in your lower body, downward dog in your upper body. So now as you walk the hands forward, push the floor away with your hands and move your chest back towards your big toe. Then let's repeat the action of the lunge game. Bend your left knee a little bit, descend your right thigh down, then squeeze your left leg, re-straighten the left thigh as you root the right thigh down and wrap the right hip in. Now can you press your chest back so much your head almost comes to the ground? And then walk your hands back, downward facing dog. Okay. Left leg up into the sky. Left foot outside your left hand. Can turn the toes out a bit. Walk your hands forward. So if you've not done this pose before, sometimes when you walk the hands forward, the hips try to come down and forward and you bring your weight down like this. So as you walk the hands forward, you have to work your hips up even more. <clears throat> Press into the floor with your hands. Then once you've found your down dog lunge, bend your back knee a little bit. Again, you're not bringing your hips forward when you root the thigh. With the knee bent, root the thigh and the outer left hip down and in. Then keep that, slowly squeeze your right leg straight and stretch the right heel back. Mm. And then walk your hands back, downward dog. Again, walk to the back of your mat. Come into a squat for a moment. Just letting your hips turn in the opposite direction. Should hopefully feel kind of nice. And then back to a downward facing dog pose. <clears throat> All right. Now, from here, it becomes a little bit more complicated playing the lunge game when we start to add thigh stretches and putting the back knee down on the ground. So we're gonna come back to our block, and the first time you do this, it might take a moment to try to figure out the right placement, the angle, but once you figure it out, it's pretty nice. So, step your right foot into a lunge, lower your left knee to the ground. Now you can pad your knee by pulling over your mat or grabbing a blanket, something soft from your house. Uh, for this first one, I'm not going to pad my knee. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lengthen the stance a little bit by walking my knee back more than I normally would. And then I'm going to angle the block so that the block is rooting into my thigh like this. All right. So now what this is going to do is in a moment when I take my thigh stretch, it's going to prevent my back thigh from dropping way down. Okay. It's going to change the pose a lot for many of you. So I'm going to bend my back knee, 
Again, I might have to adjust it just a little bit. Bend the back knee, reach back with the right hand and hold your left foot. Bring your foot in for a thigh stretch. Now this might be a lot more difficult than normal because oftentimes when we reach back and hold the foot, the back thigh just drops and collapses. So like when we were playing the lunge game before, when I had you lift the back thigh, the block is manually doing the lift of the back thigh. Turn your right foot out a little bit and try to descend your right hip down, right thigh down, and turn your chest up. And then inhale, slowly release, and switch sides. Step the left foot forward, and the right foot back. Okay. Again, angle the block. If you have a towel on your mat, or if you have super slippery pants, this might be really difficult to find the right amount of leverage. So just take a second, and then twist your left arm up, bend your right knee, reach back, and hold your foot. Okay. Now, as you draw the foot in, take your left hip, left thigh, try to root the left thigh down. So again, all we're doing repeatedly, again and again, is just moving the thigh bones towards their respective hamstring muscles. So your right thigh is moving towards the hamstring muscle, Left thighs moving down, and then twist your upper back. Oh. And then inhale, slowly release. Move your block off to the side. Go back to downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward to a plank position. Exhale, lower to the ground. Once you're on the ground, reach back, interlace your fingers, Lift your arms, chest, and legs up. Locust pose. Then press your hands and feet into the ground. Rise up to cobra or upward facing dog. My thighs feel so open. I'm going to come up into up dog for a moment. And then exhale back to downward facing dog. All right. Now again, bring your right leg forward. Lower your left knee down to the floor. We're going to use the block in the same way one more time. So, one of the ways that for me is a little bit easier to get the block to angle properly into the thigh is if you walk your back knee back a little bit. Here, block to the thigh. Then, hands to your front thigh. With your hands on your front thigh, I know it feels like, oh my gosh, I can't move because this block is basically locked me in place. But as you put your hands on your front thigh, try to descend the right thigh down a little bit and wrap your right hip in. Then, bend your back knee, reach back, and hold your foot. If you can't hold your foot, if your thighs can't do this, this is pretty deep, the block makes it more intense for a lot of people, then you can just take both arms up to the sky. Then as you draw the foot in, if you're holding the foot, try to bring your left ribs and left hip forward and around to the front. Stretch your right arm up to the sky. Again, those of you not holding the foot, you'll still get the benefit from the block moving the thigh. And then exhale, release slowly, and switch sides. Left leg forward, and right leg back. Okay. Now, final time with the block. I hope you're not struggling and cursing the block at home. When I taught this in the class in the past, there's always been a few of us, and I think a lot of it might have to do with proportions. If, if you're um, not as tall as some people, or maybe you're very tall, it can, it can make things more difficult. But I've seen people get really creative, so flex your creativity here with finding the block angle. And then you're trying your best. You're saying, get down their left thigh. Then bend your right knee, reach back, hold your foot, draw the foot in. Bring your right ribs, right chest forward, and then stretch your left arm up, or both arms up if you're not holding the foot. Breathe. And breathe again. And release. Come on out. Back to downward facing dog. Move your bluff to the side. Notice the different sensation you might be feeling in your upper thighs and your quads than before in your downward dog. 
Inhale, come to a plank. Lower to the floor. Now it seems early for this next pose. Let's just try it though. Bend your knees, reach back, hold your feet, and kick your legs up, Dhanurasana. Bow pose. If this feels too early for your lower back, you can just go back to locus where you interlace your fingers and stretch the legs straight instead of holding onto your feet. Then release, press up and back, downward facing dog. All right. From downward dog, take your right leg up into the air. Exhale, step your right leg forward. Oh my gosh, to a lunge. Lower your left knee. Take your hands up to your front thigh. All right. Now, here's where things get more difficult. How do I create the movement of the block without the block? The block was nice because it was doing a lot of effort of the back leg that we're now gonna have to do ourselves. So place your hands on your front thigh. Point your back toes. Now, as you exhale, I want you to root the right thigh down, and this time let your hips come forward and down a little bit. But now at the same time, this is where, this is pretty tedious. As your hips come forward, push your left knee down into the floor and drag your left knee forward against the resistance of the mat until you feel kind of lifting and pulling up of your back thigh towards the hamstring. Then let your right thigh descend down and forward a little more, but then pull and drag your left thigh forward. So your back thigh is working and stretching. Then keep all this, take your arms up, hook your thumbs, and then if you really want to have a good time, grip your outer right glutes in too and stretch. Exhale, release your hands down. Go ahead and shift your hips back, straighten your front leg for a moment. Half split variation. I like the kind where you sit on your toes and get a toe stretch. And then back to downward dog. All right. Left leg forward between your hands. Right knee down. Take your hands up to your front thigh. So when you start to find this work, it seems like, and I get asked this a lot, people ask me, there's no way it could be this much effort, right? There's no way it could be this hard. And the answer is, it is, right? When you're working in such a deep hip opener like this, such deep forward tilt of your hips, you wanna be able to stay really toned and strong at the same time to help protect the front part of your hip capsule. Especially if you do lunges like this all the time. So with your hands on your front thigh, press the top of the foot down, start to come forward and down, then, Push your knee down, drag it forward till you feel a charge of the back thigh and the back thigh lifts. So now here's the thing, even though the hips keep coming forward and down bit by bit, there's still a resistance of the right thigh back. And it's all about pushing the back knee down. I feel a quivering in my back leg when I do this. Then you'll notice your left side glutes go to sleep, so squeeze your left glutes in. I know there's a lot to focus on, arms up, Hook your thumbs and stretch. And exhale, come on out, downward dog. Again, walk back, go into the squat. Oh, thank God. Whew. Okay. And then we're gonna do this in one more pose. And hopefully, it's a pose that not a lot of people are thrilled about, but hopefully maybe it makes you enjoy this 10%, no. 3% more. So back to downward dog. Oh, I forgot the half splits after the other thing, so whatever. Pause, do the half splits. Okay, all right. Now, from downward facing dog, inhale, take your right leg up into the sky, stack your right hip on top of your left, bend your right knee for a moment, straighten your right leg, step your right foot through. One more time, I promise. Take your hands up to your front thigh. If you're not schwitzing, then well, you're not working hard enough, because this is schwitz worthy. Okay, hands up to the front thigh, bow forward, bend your back knee, root the thigh down. Now this time, squeeze the back thigh straight, and without hopping the foot, I want you to slowly spin your back foot out 30 degrees until your heel comes to the floor. Now keep rooting your right thigh down, but keep rooting your left thigh back. Come up, inhale, 
warrior one. Hook your thumbs, push the back outer heel down, grip your right glute sit bone in, and then exhale, release, downward dog. Oh, a deep warrior one. Take your left leg up, stack your left hip on top of your right, bend your knee, straighten your left leg, step your left foot forward, last lunge, hands to your front thigh, bend your back knee, root the thigh down, squeeze the back inner thigh to straighten it, then without hopping the foot, stretch the heel down, plug it down. Now, your hips will not be square here. Don't ever try to fully square your hips in warrior one, but work your hips in the direction of being square. Right thigh back, left thigh roots, press the heel, arms up, hook your thumbs, and stretch. Exhale, hands down, downward dog. Final time, come to a plank pose. Lower down, roll over onto your backs. Oh, thank God. Okay. For a moment, cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Hold the front of your left shin or the back of your left thigh, thread the needle. And then switch sides. Counter movement for the hip. And then release. Place your feet underneath your knees. Lift your hips, take bridge pose. Walk your upper arms and shoulders together or towards each other. Notice if the fronts of your thighs and the abdomen feel nice and open. And then exhale, release. Rest for a moment, let your knees drop in and touch. Now I'm going to do a whole video tutorial on how to do full wheel or orthodontarasana. If you're not familiar with that, uh, I want you to just do another bridge. I'm going to do a full ortha because my thighs and my, my ribs, everything feels nice and ready for it. So you can do an ortha at home or just repeat the same pose we just did. And if you're taking ortha again, notice the upper back might not feel super open, but notice the fronts of the thighs, the feeling across the abdomen, if it feels a little bit more released than normal. And then exhale, come on down. Oh, again, just let your knees drop in and touch for a moment. Hold behind your right thigh now, stretch your right leg up, stretch your left leg down. Supta Pada Mushtasana variation. Switch sides. Hold behind your left thigh, left leg straight, right leg presses down. And then now bend your knees, place both feet on the ground. Actually, let's do this. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh again. Hold behind your left thigh or the front of the shin. Then from here, keep the ankle crossed over the thigh, but release your hands. Put your left foot back on the ground. Move your butt a few inches to the right, and then let everything drop over to the left. So it's a variation of a twist. Then I like this pose because you can do one of two things here. You can take your left hand to your right thigh and either push your thigh away from you to stretch more the front of the hip, or you can grab the outside of the thigh and pull the thigh more in so it becomes more of an eagle leg twist. Or you can do both. Then back to center. Cross your left ankle over your right thigh. Hold behind the right thigh, the front of the right shin. Mm. And then release. Now before you do the twist, put your right foot on the ground, shift your butt to the left, then come into your twist. I'm going to do both variations. Right hand pushes your left thigh away from you. You can stretch the left arm up and overhead. And then you can pull the knee in and slide the foot more underneath like eagle legs. Oh. Inhale, come back to center. I don't normally like to finish with happy baby, but I think today it'll feel really good. 
So come into happy baby, holding onto your heels, outer edges of your feet or ankles. Then bring your knees together, wrap your arms around the front of your shins. A little bit of a squeeze and a lift. And Shavasana, corpse pose. Stretch the arms and the legs fully. Take a deep breath in. And a full exhale out. Relax the eyes, relax the jaw. Go ahead and just gently open your eyes. Bend one knee lightly at a time and roll over onto your side. And press up to seated. I hope you enjoyed that game. Feel free to play that game with all of your best friends and in-laws. Um, like I often say, or always say at the end of my class, this is for free from me to you. But of course, if you feel compelled and you enjoyed this class, or you enjoy my classes and my teaching, I kindly request a small donation of any type directly to me. The payment directions are in the comments, or the description second section, Venmo, PayPal, etc. Anything is appreciated. And if you can't afford to pay me anything, I this is for me to you for free. Uh, if you have requests, uh, questions, I'm always happy to answer. I hope you feel delightful for the rest of the day and the night. Bye.